travel is back. And United Airlines wants to lure you on board with a record number of new flights this summer. When I learned they'd be the first U.S. airline to serve Amman, Jordan, I immediately booked a seat on the inaugural flight. And United did not miss the opportunity to throw an epic party. Join me for this first trip to Jordan. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now I'm at Washington Dulles International Airport, about to fly with United Airlines on their inaugural flight to Amman, Jordan. I love inaugural flights, and I can't wait to share this one with you. Let's go get checked in and get this trip started. Because I was booked into Polaris, that's United's international business class, check-in took no time at all, and I was on my way. Our flight is scheduled to depart at 10 o'clock tonight, after most of the other international flights have already left Dulles. We'll spend 10 hours and 32 minutes in the air, covering nearly 6,000 miles. We're slated to touch down in Amman just before 4 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. And when we land in Jordan, stick around and join me for a brief visit to Petra, one of the most iconic places anywhere on Earth. I'll even meet up with one of my best friends, someone many of you know well from here on YouTube. The last time I was on an inaugural flight was with SAS on their A350 from uh, Copenhagen to Chicago. It seems like a world away, a lifetime really, uh, if you think about how much has changed in the world of aviation. Uh, but it is equally exciting to be on this flight today, the first for United to Amman. The flight was scheduled to leave out of gate C2, which meant a train ride and a long walk. We are 100% going to check out the Polaris Lounge, but first, I think we should head to the gate to see if the airplane's there. I sort of think there might be a little bit of a party, but that might come later, so let's go over there and check it out. Our flight was supposed to be served by a 787-8, but because of a mechanical issue with this plane, it was switched out to a far more beautiful 787-10. That also meant a lot of people received last-minute upgrades thanks to the larger number of seats on the Dash 10. Things were calm here, but that would soon change. For now, let's head to the lounge. It's incredible. Access to Polaris lounges is extremely limited. Pretty much the only way to get in here is to have a same-day international business class ticket on United or another Star Alliance carrier. Getting in always feels special. Even the lounge was celebrating tonight's launch. There it is. So excited about this flight. Inaugurals are the best. As I've said before, United Polaris lounges are the best I've seen in the United States. And the one here in Dulles is no exception. It did get pretty crowded, but cleared out as soon as the European flights left. This lounge has it all. Loads of seats. A massive buffet. There are lots of choices of where to eat or work, including these phone booths. It's absolutely silent in here. It's a great place for a Zoom meeting or a conference call. There's a huge bar. And of course, a sit-down restaurant. I plan to eat dinner on the plane, so I just had a light bite, some soup in the lounge. This soup is just, it's like better than soup should be. But I guess if you put that much cream in anything, it's going to be good. There was plenty of caffeine, valuable given our late departure time. And all of it, as much as you want, of the food and the drinks and the coffee, it's all included in the price of your ticket. But let's face it, it's not a visit to a Polaris lounge without a toast. Cheers. It's time to head to the gate, so let's head over there and see what's going on at... Uh... C2, our departure gate. It's impossible to tell you how excited I am right now. It's, I'm over the moon. This has everything. It's an inaugural flight. It's a new route. It's a new country. I'm flying in business class, Polaris. This has it all. Inaugural flights are always special events, and this one was a real blowout given just how much time has passed since United, or really any other airline for that matter, was able to celebrate positive news like this new route. There was music loads more food, not to mention giveaways. There was a passport holder and a lapel pin. But things really kicked into high gear when the Jordanian dancers arrived. What breed is that? <laughs> there were speeches, and I really felt for these dignitaries. I mean, that would be a tough act to follow. 
I found United Airlines' Patrick Quayle's observations about United's transatlantic expansion to be most interesting. United will become the single largest airline in the world across the Atlantic, and that's a first. And that's really impressive, and we're really proud of that. And it starts tonight with Amon Jordan. And if you look at what we're doing, we're adding more destinations than every other U.S. airline combined serves across the Atlantic. And that's pretty, pretty impressive. And the excitement culminated with a symbolic ribbon cutting by the dignitaries and crew, which also meant it was time to get on board. No better way to start a flight than that, am I right? But it's time to get on board, so uh, let's head off to Jordan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to United Flight 525, non-stop service to Amman Jordan. This is our inaugural flight to Amman Jordan with United Airlines. We're boarding. All right, so I'm going to seat 7A. Cannot wait for this flight. The odd-numbered seats on these 787s offer more privacy because they're closer to the windows. I was glad to be in 7A today. The cabin is beautiful and arranged in a 1-2-1 configuration. Seats in the middle alternate between ones that are close together, great for couples, and those that are separated. There's a lot to take in at this seat. There was a special certificate recognizing the day and this flight. Pajamas were already on each seat as well. The best pillow in the sky, United's gel pillow, was a welcome addition as well. We'll take a look at the amenity kit later. And the Saks Fifth Avenue bedding is always nice. There's a massive screen and a USB power source here. You'll have a coat hook. And to the side, you'll find a remote control for the IFE, a power socket, and a headphone jack, also a reading light. Inside the cabinet, there are headphones to use while on board and a bottle of water. The seat is endlessly adjustable, but I find the placement of these buttons to be a, a bit challenging as I kept accidentally pressing them throughout the flight. Above, you'll find air vents and reading lights. Cheers. Our flight was delayed because loading baggage took a little longer than anticipated, but that just gave Patrick Quayle more time to pass out commemorative t-shirts to the passengers. It also allowed for two late arriving passengers to make the flight. I always wonder what it'd be like to accidentally stumble onto an inaugural flight. As a person who books them the instant they're announced, I'm always curious about the people who just happen to end up on board. This was a late departure, but I knew I needed to stay up for dinner so I could share it with you, so here goes. The tray table is fairly large and offered enough space to eat or work, but not both. The in-flight entertainment offered a ton of choices, but naturally, the map was best for me. You can send messages for free, and internet access was available for a fee. I paid about $22 for the full flight, which I didn't think was too bad. It wasn't very fast, but it still was nice to stay in touch with all of you who were tracking the flight on social media. Service began with a drink and warm nuts. I ordered the chicken while we were at the gate, and when prompted for a backup selection, said I'd take the swordfish if I had to. And the swordfish was what I got. I don't understand United's process for taking orders, but since I was one of the last on board to be allowed to make my selection, I'm not surprised they'd run out of my first choice. Maybe the equipment swap and sudden influx of business class passengers hadn't been accounted for in the catering, I don't know. The food was okay, but didn't seem out of the ordinary for a business class flight. That said, I ate it all, so it's not like I can complain too much. Dessert was quite nice though, an ice cream sundae. This was a late night already. We didn't depart until nearly 11, so I set up the bed. The seat lays out fully flat, and despite being narrow, is still comfortable. The footwell is a bit cramped, but I still managed about four hours of solid sleep despite my extreme excitement. Oh, and by the way, you can even request a mattress pad and slippers if you'd like. As soon as I woke up, a flight attendant asked if I'd like to have a snack. He suggested the veggie wrap, which was pretty good. 
we were over northern Spain on a beautiful, clear morning. We still had about four hours to go. But honestly, the time seemed to drag interminably. You see, I was meeting up with one of my best friends, someone those of you who like these kinds of videos will certainly recognize. Stick around to see who I met up with. After a cup of coffee, I decided to take a walk through the cabin. The economy is laid out in a 3-3-3 configuration. There's also a, a premium plus section with a cabin configured in a 2-3-2 setup. I had some more coffee as the rest of the cabin started waking up. It was time for breakfast, which was a real highlight, mostly because I was able to get my choice, the steak and eggs. I've never had steak and eggs before, not even on the ground. And I'm glad to say I can give credit to United Airlines for introducing me to it. The amenity kit was very nice and had everything you'd want on a flight this long, and that's a lot. I was particularly grateful for the eye mask and toothbrush and toothpaste. Now, about these windows. When the 787 first came out, everybody was really excited about these windows. They're controlled electronically. Uh, but in practice, I don't think they're that great. Uh, they never get fully dark, uh, so if you're flying during the daytime and want to get some sleep, you really can't. Uh, they're also never fully bright. I'm just not a fan of these windows. But let me know in the comments below, do you prefer a traditional window shade or this 787 electronic dimming control? We crossed over the Israeli coast and our approach was imminent. So, that means it's time for the unscientific Jeb score. We'll rate the lounge, the seat, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service, each out of a possible five stars to get a sense for this flight. For other flights I've rated and to compare them, head over to greenergrass.com slash Jebscore. First, the lounge. Well, it's nothing short of incredible. Having an a la carte restaurant is almost a guarantee of five stars for me, and throw in those spectacular views, and there's no doubt about it, five stars here. The seat was quite nice. I've never felt the need to have a door, and it really has everything you'd want, even for a super long flight like this one. Now, I do wish there was more room in, in bed mode, though. Uh, this seat earns four stars. The in-flight entertainment offered plenty of choices, but it was clunky. It even locked up on me a couple of times. I was able to exit and restart my movie, but it was still kind of frustrating. The IFE earns four stars. The food? Well, it wasn't great. The swordfish didn't have much flavor and was extremely dry. I saw the chicken and it looked better, but it wasn't available to me. Three stars here. The service, though, was extraordinary, and I mean that. Shauna, our international purser, was the best flight attendant I've ever encountered. And really, everyone on the crew was service-focused and excited to be on board. That's not hyperbole, and these inaugural flights tend to have just elevated service, but regardless, this is a five-star crew. So, that leaves United's new service from Washington Dulles International Airport to Amman, Jordan, with 21 out of a possible 25 stars. And after an incredible flight, complete with water cannon salute, I headed about three hours south to Petra, where I met up with YouTube sensation and one of my best friends, Dennis Bunnick. Have a look at this. Petra absolutely exceeded my expectations, and I hope you'll find yourself on board United Airlines to Amman soon, so you can also check out this incredible site. But it was re reconnecting with my old friend that really made it special. What's your number one piece of advice for a first-time visitor to uh, Petra? See it all. Definitely the treasury. But head up to the monastery, walk through the city, and just enjoy it. Be there in the moment. Don't spend all your time taking photos and videos and stuff. As selfies. No, don't do that. Between now and the next time. See you in the sky.